I, uh, I actually was there when Nick started with Adobe. Uh, so it makes me very proud to, to hear the great success and uh, amazing work that he's doing. And uh, I won't feel bad if I lose to you. <laughs> that would make me even happier. All right, so um, let's just get started. Uh, my name is uh, Jay Hello. Uh, I am um, a digital experience architect at South Krillic. Uh, we are an Adobe partner. Uh, and uh, in my past life, I used to be uh, at Adobe. I spent five, almost six years. Uh, as an Adobe consultant between analytics, audience manager, and also the entire experience cloud. Um, and today I have Jeff with me. Hi there. So uh, yeah, my name's Jeff Mazzetti and I work at uh, Intercontinental Hotel Group, um, run their global programmatic for PMP and uh, programmatic, and been with the company roughly about six years now. Yep. Sweet. All right, so today we wanted to um, approach this from a little bit of a different angle. We don't have Harold, but we have some really <laughs> nice looking swimmers. Anyone here is a swimmer? Does anyone swim? I can swim. swim. Okay. <laughs> well, if you ever want to go for the Olympics, uh, we, have, uh, we have a good, uh, a good path for you. Is it just good? This is good. Okay. So we ha we're gonna walk you through a journey of someone who wants to win the Olympics, wants to win the gold, and, uh, and just stay, stay with us. We're at some point, we're gonna bring this back and uh, tie this to the Anis manager experience. Cool, so basically, you're a swimmer and all you wanna do is your dream to become an Olympic gold medalist one day. But before you get there, you gotta get the basics down. You need to get in the pool, you need to swim, you gotta figure out your stroke, how do you dive into the pool, kick off the back wall. Um, and the whole time, you gotta constantly practice. And um, practicing is, is key to anything that you wanna be successful in. You gotta put the hours in, you have to have a really good lean diet, dedication, and really just drive home what you want to achieve in that, 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 that Olympic gold medal in the future. But the way to get there is what I call product intelligence. So you, and performance intelligence, it's your PI, but you need a real good coach to point that out. So how quick is your stroke? What is your technique like? Um, when you're diving in the pool, are you getting in incremental, incremental uh, time on your dive, on your kickoff on the wall, on your stroke? And you can't really do that without a coach. They can't point that out. You can't point it out to yourself. So you need to get out the pool and your coach needs to help you with this. So yes, it's, it's the basics. Uh, having that initial instinct that you want to swim and then putting the practice, swimming every day, spending a lot of time, getting the right coach, someone who's going to point out the important things that you need to improve on. But what's going to be important along the way, and that's what makes you stand out from being just a normal swimmer and a swimmer who's going to win the gold medal is really reinventing yourself. And that can be in different ways. How can you get out of your comfort zone? How can you uh, get this new skill set that makes you stand out? So that takes time, but that takes also the opportunity for you to think outside of the box. So basically, you need to compete. And if you're not competing, you're not going to be learning from all of that performance indicators and intelligence that your coach has been pointing out to you. You need to find out when you're in the pool, how other competitors are run, uh, like swimming, how, how their strokes are, where they're beating you, and try and find out how you can streamline and incrementally get a little bit better by competing against everyone. Absolutely. And then the core. Um, there, there's actually a funny story uh, that I recently heard uh, about Michael Phelps at one of, the, one of the Olympics. I think early on when he was going for a new record, he jumped in the pool and uh, his goggles filled up with water right away. Uh, he didn't stop. He actually closed his eyes because he was trained by his uh, coach to swim blindly. So close his eyes and swam back and forth. And when he came out of water and looked at the, the time, he actually set a new world record. The reason that he was able to do this was because he had the right core. He had the right training 
and he was ready for the impossible. He was ready to take any new dimension, any uh, emergency or urgent thing that happens that was not planned for. That was key for, for him to win. Now, let's, let's come back. Let's talk, uh, we are here not about Michael Phelps or swimming, we're here about uh, the DMP and Ani's manager. So of course, um, yeah, I work for IHG, it's a global company with 14 brands, all the hotel brands, plus IHG loyalty. So we sit on a ton of data, and for our company to operate globally, we need to have an enterprise DMP that can help us solve our solutions. Uh, within the programmatic team, what we're looking to do is data-driven marketing. And we can't really do that efficiently without a DMP. So for us, this is the key. Um, and to, before we get into the basics, uh, to highlight something about ISG, uh, which I'm sure everyone in this room have stayed at ISG without knowing it at one point, uh, they are global. We're talking about 100 countries. This global client is using the DMP globally. So it's not only in North America or it is uh, only in APAC. It is global use. Now, with the basics, when it comes to the DMP, it's the same things that Nick talked about. There's three things that need to be done. We need to collect data. And in this case, IG looked at their data and, and they have very strong first party. <coughs> they looked at their website data, their mobile app data, uh, third party data, as well as any media. I mean, as, a, as an advertiser, they're spending a lot of money on media, so they want to get that data as well into the DMP. They did that. At that point, they moved on into creating some audiences. Tons of trades, a lot of segments. They did modeling, algorithmic. That was a key point for the basics. And then, how do they use the data? They started uh, looking at the destinations, which DSP, which partner they want to work with. Uh, they own other tools from Adobe, Adobe Target and Adobe Analytics. How can they activate this data within the Adobe Cloud? And then they started practicing, right? Practicing was important because now we have data, we have audiences, but what do we do with them? Pointing out a few things here that they, the ISG has done prior to some of the cool features that were discussed earlier today. Uh, one of them is cookie splitting. So, Terry talked about uh, the idea of Audience Labs. Audience Labs is fairly new. I love the feature, but back in the day, Audience Labs wasn't there, so we did cookie splitting. And at that point, we literally looked at the Audience Manager cookie, knowing that it's a, it's a hex with a certain number of characters. We were able to split audiences. And that was key because IG wanted to look at different audiences that were mutually exclusive. So we were able to do that at, at that point. Overlap reports. We all use overlap reports, but they were the power users of it. Um, the idea there, the, power, the overlap reports help them in not only understanding how first party and third party mix and overlap, but also how do they index. So that was key. Impression data and actionable logs. Uh, bringing, we talked about bringing the data in from the media, uh, the media impressions. Uh, they, I don't know how much your budget is today, but they, they have a lot of media that is always active, globally. I, I stress on that point again. So there was so much data brought in, and they were capturing that data and looking at it to understand what value it brings in. And finally, modeling, right? We, I'm very excited, by the way, about this new feature about, that we saw in modeling today. But modeling also played a role for them to understand what are their influential traits and how those can tell them more about their personas. Now, uh, there is, I know you can talk about this a lot more, but can you just discuss one of these that was really crucial to some of the practice that you guys have done in the um, DMP? Not a problem, Gary. So I, um, actually, all of these I could go into a lot of detail with, and there were a lot of projects that we've worked on over the number of years, but impression data, and today, pulling event tag data from DTM, for us has been really key. While we buy media, we buy a lot of media globally, so what we have to do is constantly look at our funnel. Mm -hmm. And the impression data allows us to look at stuff that's high up funnel, collect that data, segment it in the DMP, and then be able to overlap and have a look at what's converting. So we can look at our awareness campaign and see that it didn't convert and then be able to personalize that message a little bit further down the, the, the journey in our funnel to get them onto our side. 
and that for us is bring, bringing us really good media spend gains, which, which is crucial because if we're just targeting everyone all the time and not controlling it, which we can with the DMP, we're gonna, we're gonna spend a lot of money for no reason. So now we've got a control over our budget, over our audience, and impression data has been quite key to that. Excellent. Coaching, um, I know I, I was there, uh, part of Adobe, uh, when Maybe, you guys started yeah. with the DMP, and, and today we are a partner as well, helping in, in going the next step. But c can you share with, with the team here around what value and I, I listed here some of the features that are key to, to your business, but can you talk a little bit about how this was valuable to, to the work that, uh, that you're doing yeah, actually? No so, I mean, all of this is actually really valuable and it's on our roadmap and uh, we're working hard to continuously get all of these implemented. But service side hoarding, one of those no-brainers for us. We got Adobe Analytics target we, we, we use quite a few Adobe products, so our global technology team, to your point earlier on, is super stoked with us. We've, we've got to site forwarding, we've got rid of a pixel, and um, looking forward to all the really cool stuff that you guys were just presenting earlier on about analytics. Um, it's something that we've been wanting for about four years already, so yeah, it's, it's, it's real good. But yeah. All right. Now we get to that stage, the reinventing. Um, and there is many cases that happened um, at ISG that they found themselves, they needed to reinvent themselves. Uh, one of, there's two I'm gonna point out, one we'll talk about. Uh, one was a taxonomy. Uh, one of the things you will notice if you're standing up a DMP uh, is that taxonomy is so important. Um, and you might, in the beginning, say, I just wanna get data in. Yes, we're all excited, we wanna use the data but please spend enough time understanding how that taxonomy is built because later on as you scale up, that's gonna be key for you. So uh, ISG, halfway through, uh, actually a year or two after having the DMP, identified that their taxonomy was getting a little bit out of hand. There was so much data coming in globally, they had to go and reinvent it. And they spent a lot of time uh, restructuring their, their folder structures, their, their, their naming, uh, and also how the data can be found. The other uh, part that was reinvented was really <coughs> identifying the personas. So 14 brands, that means at least you have 14 different uh, personas. And yes, some messaging is good across all personas, but some others really need to be talking to that particular person who wants to stay at a Holiday Inn, not at a Kimpton. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit. C can you share with us how, how you guys went about uh, identifying these personas? So firstly, our brand teams came to us with the persona done from brand studies. And they came to us and they wanted us to action off it um, digitally and purchase data and our advertising so we could go after their brand personas. Um, we started looking at the DMP and the data. First party data is king, it's un undeniable. So what we started doing is building seed audiences for each one of our brands and once we had a, 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 for example, a Crown Plaza book, if someone came through our site, they booked on our site, we captured that data in the DMP. We started looking at overlap reports to see where we can, we can find some sort of key insights. And then we stumbled onto a thought, ah, why don't we do a digital brand persona? And that digital brand persona is looking for overlap reports, doing a little bit of like magic with our analytics, um, putting together an index, and then also building other thresholds, which then pulls down all the overlap that's on our third party data to see where our cookies overlap with other third party data. And this started bringing up a profile to basically, one, reinforce what our brand teams were saying, and two, to actually go to them and say, hey, you were almost right, but this is, this is what it looks like from a desktop perspective, or from a mobile perspective, or even through our SEO. So we can build different brand personas from different lenses. And this for us was, was absolute magic because we could go back to the business and actually show them all the work that they've done from a brand perspective and how it works digitally. And again, we, we tested this. So we took the original brand persona and the digital brand persona and see at the end of the day how they matched up in, turn of, like in terms of a return on investment we saw that we were getting incremental gains from using this method. 
I hope that part of the new data science workspace, there is some indexing, just <coughs> hinting. But yeah, that was, that was a great indexing exercise that IG team literally did by using overlap reports and Excel and some modeling into it. Okay, competition. Now, competition in this case, uh, like Jeff pointed out er, in the earlier slide, it's not really, okay, we wanna compete, we wanna see how we are measuring across other people, but it's also to learn from others. So, uh, you guys attend Adobe Summit every year. Uh, I know also Ramp Up, Live Ramp as programmatic, so many conferences. Tell us some about some of the experiences that you had at these conferences that really helped in taking you a step closer to that gold medal. So yeah, definitely. I think uh, what comes out to mind is went to ramp up this year. Um, Nordstrom, their digital programmatic um, team presented, and they had some really cool things that they were doing. One, how they have their ecosystem for programmatic set up, which is which which helped us validate how we set up. And even though we're completely different verticals, but the key takeaway from that is they're doing things that we weren't really thinking about and we got back to our office and we're like, okay, cool. Well, this is what Nordstrom are doing. Can we test that out? And that's what I love about going to events, ramp up, DigiBay, programmatic, IO, or even OBR. So you just hear what everyone else is doing. Um, are, we, are we competing against everyone? In a sense, yeah, we compete against hotel brands, but I'd love to know how to better use the product, how we can get better use out of what we're doing as marketers. Uh, all right, and then the final step of that process is the core. The core is having, is thinking outside of the box, but also being ready for, to take on anything that comes that is not planned for. One of the things that they've done was really building center of excellence. I know you're very happy to hear that. <laughs> Nina always preaches about center of excellence is very important. It is very important, and especially on a global level. So few, they've done many things, from having the right rec uh, access, <coughs> having the right data export rules, having uh, access control. All these things were done right, but the most important part was having the proper way of requesting segments and creating segments. Not everyone can go into the DMP and just create segments as they like. They might wanna do this in analytics, go ahead. But in the DMP, these segments, we can wanna keep them clean. So there was a request form. The request form really, you explained why you wanted that segment, what was it about, and then there was a committee that decided, hey, maybe this segment already exists. You don't need to recreate it. Or, hey, this campaign you're trying to run, this might not be the right segment for you. So that helped a lot in educating these different global teams, and the COE was able to drive that. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that, and uh, if you don't have this in the CMC for basic, you're not going to be able to manage what your Singapore team is doing or your Shanghai team. So if, for example, someone in Singapore has a campaign and our Europe team have a campaign, but there's so many similarities on it, with this impact form, we know our data, so we can see what these teams are requesting, do an audience discovery for them, and then go to them and go, hey, here's your, your suppression segments and your targeting segments. So, for example, Singapore is going after a European consumer or something. And there's a campaign that's very similar in Europe, but it's Europe targeting Europeans from one hotel region into another. So now we can go to our team and actually, one, get learnings out of it, two, pass on suppression segments so the, the, the consumer is not getting bombarded by uh, an ad that's specific to the Southeast Asia region, and then that same consumer is getting an ad from Europe for a Europe campaign. So we kind of use this to make sure that our customers are coming first and that we're not just willy-nilly marketing to them whenever. There has to be a good reason for it. Great. All right, so we've talked about a lot of wins, and this is, this is probably a lot of people have seen this. I stole this from my friends at Adobe. But this is, this is what this is supposed to do, is show you that the DMP is in the center of the entire ecosystem. And I want to say that IG was able to make that happen. Um, it did feed the data from different data sources. Then it became the true repository that not only the media and the DSPs were using it, but their target is using it, and other decision engines are using it, uh, as well as their, the email data or the email engine. It became that center. 
Um, and again, I repeat that globally. So not only one team using it, but many others. And uh, that is seeing that in practice uh, has been probably the biggest win for me as a consultant because that's what we always hope clients to get to. So I, the question is, did, did you guys win? Do you feel like with all this work you've done, is this it, where we got gold? Well, um, in my humble opinion, yes, I think we've, we've definitely hit our targets, um, but the race is not over. We've, we've got more events to come and we've got more planning. Um, IHG as a business has gone through a transformation this year and we've got a whole new strategy to go to market. So now it's building on that. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Any questions? Do we have time for questions? Or? Oh yeah, totally. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about your COE and more specifically how many individuals and what was your background? And for example, um, was it a member of an analytics team? So, so um, basically, for us, everything is going to be in-house, it's going to be through our team. So from an analytics perspective, we do have a specialist in analytics for paid media that we work with constantly. So whenever we have any sort of test and learn or some campaign that we're running, it's constantly measured. We'll build a methodology for that. That, that person will be responsible for executing that methodology for us. Um, and then we'll execute from a data strategy standpoint for, for our region or regions. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Cool. Sorry, if I could, one more quick yeah. one. Yeah. How long did it take to set up the kind of the process and the buy-in from everybody around segmentation creation? So the segmentation creation was a, a no-brainer for all of us within marketing. It's, uh, I think the product in a whole we've been working on for about four years now. So we've, we've been integrating, learning, developing ways of working constantly. And, and like Jerry said, it's a center of excellence. Um, building segments, putting in CRM data through LiveRamp, and then onboarding it into the audience manager. For us, we had to do that, to your point, with your clients. Um, we saw massive, massive rate improvement and increase in audience size from that. That also gave us the ability to leverage our members a lot better. So now, for example, if we've got a loyalty campaign, we, we can target specific loyalty members by tier, or we can suppress them and make sure they're not seeing other messages. So yeah, uh, the, journey's, the journey's been about four years. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, is there any particular challenge that you guys challenges that you guys want to like call out that that was particularly like difficult for you guys? I think the biggest challenges for me and Zigzag are going to be internal, um, internal teams selling across to senior leadership, making sure that all stakeholders are on board with that. Everyone's got different priorities. Um, I think as a business we we really trying to be as agile as possible. Um, so there's a lot of support to get this ecosystem up in place. Um, we've got, we've completely changed our organization this year. We've got a new CMO, there's a product marketing team to help us initiate all of our roadmap initiatives. So that's streamlining things.